massive 48 hours for that team with some big announcements and some great building blocks for 2018 with Andretti coming on board and all sorts. Uh, look at this, the fans at the mountain, a huge roll up. It began on Wednesday this week and the crowd has just kept on building. The campsites are packed. We can't wait for tomorrow's Super Chief Auto Bathurst 1000 and that pairing there a moment ago, Courtney and Perkins, they've qualified eighth. They'll be in the shootout later this afternoon. Greg Murphy's with us in the commentary box as we take a look at the field of play for this. It is just one of the world's great race tracks. 23 turns in all. This event on the calendar is at a very pivotal point too. It's a non-championship round for Dunlop Super 2, but a lot of prestige in winning this afternoon's 250k race. But first, they have to conquer the mountain over 41 laps. Yeah, it doesn't matter if non-championship or championship, you still want to grab a trophy up here at the mountain, no question about it. And uh, the Super 2 have been putting on a great show this season. This will be a good show. Plenty of very fast times being laid down out there today across the field and it's been impressive to watch all these turns all the way down the hill now turn 17 slowing down for forest elbow the infamous forest elbow before accelerating flat out over 650 odd horsepower supercar all the way down the straight approaching that 300k marker hard on the brakes massive brake pressure to slow the car and then down to Murray's Corner to complete the lap. There's the elevation. When you stand up the top here, if you haven't done it, if you haven't been to Bathurst and you haven't been to the top of the mountain, do yourself a favour and go and check it out because it is special. So here's some highlights of the last round of the championship, which was a part of the support bill at oh. Sandown. Jack Perkins sent into a wild ride in the Titan Trade Commodore that is run by Dragon Motorsport. That contact there with... Anton Di Pasquale, Bryce Forward. He's been fast here at the mountain this weekend in that Midis Nissan Altima, but some contact with Nathan Morecambe from Eggleston Motorsport. All good for his teammate, Paul Dumbrell, in that first race of the weekend. He would ultimately go on to amass a series lead of 49 points. An unbelievable comeback for Todd Hazelwood after the big rollover in the co-driver race for the main event. He stepped straight back into his car here, Murphy. Bit of contact for him to deal with but that was yeah. pretty impressive that he could do that that uh, damage incidentally to Jake Kostecki's car has not been fully repaired and he will share the car with his brother Kurt this afternoon for the 250k's to come we weren't short of we weren't short of action I should say teammates Shay Davies who's not here this weekend unfortunately and Bryce Forward coming together then Brown losing the traction with the front wheels down to turn one Hazelwood was fighting his way back through the field after that first lap altercation where he was an innocent bystander with Anton Di Pasquale, who also isn't represented this weekend. And it was Jack LeBrock in the go-getter, Nissan Altima, who starts from pole position to take the last win. Hazelwood will be alongside him today, and they were alongside each other on the podium overall at Sandown. So we uh, got 41 laps to get through today, Rusty. The conditions are very, very good. The temperature has dropped ever so slightly, and uh, we are looking forward to it. Certainly are. The view from on high, the Blackwoods Express cam cap, which will patrol the lane, in addition to our own Rihanna Crean and Cameron Vandendungen. Good afternoon, Cam. Good afternoon. Last year, Paul Dumbrell, you're in the older spec car on the front year. You've got a current car, and you're back to the second row. But, uh, mate, you're still a long race ahead. I don't know if I like what you're inferring there, but uh, no, uh, <laughs> must be getting old and slow. So, no, uh, hey, uh, qualifying was really, really close. So, looking forward to the race this afternoon. Uh, not much of a prelude for tomorrow, considering it's going to be wet, but it'll be good to uh, give it a 42 lap today. Three times you've won this race. This is going for fourth consecutively. You've got a bit of confidence going into this one. Yeah, love it up here. I think it's my, my 19th uh, Bathurst weekend up here in the uh, in the V8. So, hey, no, it's really, really special. It's a great, great rewarding track, and uh, I think it's going to be a really, really tough day today. Good luck, PD. Thank you. Jack LeBrock, the biggest race for the Super 2 Series in terms of length. It's not worth championship points, but you're starting from the best position you possibly can. Yeah, no, I had a pearl run yesterday with Qualify, and it was, um, yeah, the car was really hooked up, and Matt White guys did an awesome job of giving us a, a good car there. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting today. It's a pretty long race. Like you said, longest race of the season for us and uh, pit stops and all that sort of stuff. But uh, it's a good warm-up for tomorrow as well. So, uh, yeah, just going to make sure we get a good launch here and, uh, yeah, to see what we can do. 
Thanks for, for your time. Good luck. No worries. Thank you. Cheers. 25-year-old from Melbourne, Jack LeBrock, winner of the most recent race of the championship, starting this one after picking up the armor all check. And here's a little snapshot for you of how qualifying unfolded. Hazelwood hits the track. Jonathan Webb's dad looking on as we go inside the techno garage. Mason Barbera in the lone Wilson Security Commodore this weekend. Richard Musket just concentrating on his drive with James Moffat in the main event. And a lot of cars, a lot of teams, drivers went the wrong way with their setup. The conditions had changed dramatically from earlier in the day in the practice session for qualifying. The temperature was up, the UV was on the track, track temp had gone through the roof. There's Matt White looking on, his driver. It didn't affect these guys. LeBrock seemed to be in control, although he had to do a bit of work there for much of the session. Matt Charter's day ended very early in qualifying with a broken front upright, and that brought out a red flag. That uh, did hurt a few people that were on flyers at the time, including Bryce Ford, the SPD, comfortably using every bit of road. And this was one of the cars that was affected by a change in the temperature that was McCauley Jones, obviously Jack Smith, he was affected badly. That car uh, took till 2.30 this morning to be repaired after that little mistake heading up to the cutting. But uh, as it turned out, LeBrock controlled it. Hazelwood, after doing a lot of changes to that car also to get it comfortable, ended up on the front row. Brianna. Yeah, and as you can see, Nathan Morecambe in pit lane. He's going to start this race from pit lane, qualified 13th for the, the, this 250k race. They've opted to do so. Just a poor qualifying position, and they, they can save a little bit of fuel by starting from pit lane. So that's the reason why Nathan is uh, sitting there. He's 25 years of age, the reigning Australian endurance champion, stepped up to be a part of the Eggleston Motorsport team this year. and. We'll talk with our, our pit commentators and, and the team bosses in the lane as this one un unfolds because a story this morning is fuel economy. And a lot of rivals of the Nissan Altimas think that they will struggle for economy, that they may need a splash, a second stop. Andrew Jones told me he's targeting, if things unfold the right way, a stop around lap 17 or 18, but even he felt as though they would need a safety car potentially or to save some fuel wow. if they went flat out. So, But he feels they're on the better side economy-wise compared to their rivals. Yeah, Matt White was uh, pretty cagey this morning Very. when Rihanna spoke to him about it. And uh, I think, um, from what I've gathered also, in the, down in the lane talking to everybody, yeah, there's uh, a bit of an economy issue there. I think that the Ultima drivers will need to be saving fuel effectively right from the first lap. And I don't know if anyone will sprint off into the distance anyway. I don't know if there's going to be searching for absolute outright uh, lap times and, and trying to build a gap because potentially everyone might be in the same boat a little bit. So we'll see what happens. 15 cars set to take the start. So the revs start to rise in what is a precursor, a dress rehearsal, if you like, for tomorrow's big one. The Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. This is the Dunlop Super 2 category, the second tier of our sport. And they have a mini enduro. It's become a Saturday tradition here in recent years. 250 kilometres or 41 laps to come. Jack LeBrock in the go-getter Nissan Altima has pole position for this one. Off the back of a win last time out at Sandown as well. He's joined on the front row by Todd Hazelwood. This is a non point scoring round for the championship but Todd trails Paul Dumbrell by just 49 going into what will be the final and deciding round on the streets of Newcastle it's only a few few weeks around the corner now we can't wait for that brand new event a brand new grand finale it'll be here before we know it because uh, Bathurst has turned up on our doorstep pretty quick and two weeks time we're off to the Gold Coast for another round then New Zealand and then to Newcastle Bryce Forward starting fifth. He's caught been out mighty, by, hasn't he? He has been. He got caught out by those couple of red flags yesterday on a on two flyers, but feeling at home, he has been so fast across the top of the mountain. Him and Jack LeBrock looking at information, obviously in the same team, and have been sharing a lot of information about uh, little areas where they've got pros and cons or you know strengths and weaknesses. And uh, Jack's been looking at his form, Bryce's form across the top of the hill in some of those areas where he's just a little bit quicker and vice versa. So expect uh, to see these Ultimas running reasonably strongly, but 
I would say, in a fuel conserve, conserve mode pretty much straight away. Bryce was fast in the morning warm-up for this race. He was quick in practice session number one as well. He's just 19 years of age, comes from Darwin, but spends the better part of his time in uh, Melbourne helping to prep the cars. He's been very hands-on at Matt White Motorsport. Huge crowd. So many people in the paddock looking at the back of the garages. It was obviously autograph session a little bit earlier on with the main game drivers and their co-drivers and there was thousands of people there is thousands of people over the back look at that there they are here's the super cheap auto store it is flat out in there would have been a little late for commentary if you had to line up for an ice cream or something wouldn't you that is That's fantastic awesome. so everyone's uh prepared for the super two race been incredibly entertaining all season so far we have not been let down at all by the excitement from this category. Young drivers in this class determined to be full-time supercar drivers in the latest machinery. The best cars are very, very similar to what's been run in the main game. Some of them are only six months old, like the one that Paul Umbrella's driving. That car was actually a spare for 888 up until recently, just in case they had an incident. They weren't going to be able to drag that car back from Eagles to Motorsport and use it for one of maybe uh, the Team Vortex or Red Bull Hot Racing Team if required. So the latest in machinery, some hungry drivers out there to showcase their abilities in front of the teams. Yeah, that, and that's how they line up. Macaulay Jones alongside Paul Dumbrell on row two. Forward and Perkins. Perkins wasn't too happy this morning though, was he Rusty? He felt the car was nervous in race trim uh, compared to what it was like in qualifying. And Matt Charters had a real drama. The Charters had a tough weekend so far with that car. There's lots of good stories to follow here. I think Macaulay Jones could be on for a uh, for a good showing. We'll watch him off the second row of the grid. Young Will Brown. He's out of grid position number seven. This guy's just 19 years of age. Comes from Queensland. He's the reigning Toyota 86 Series champion. He stepped up after winning the 2016 Formula 4 Series as well. And he's been immersed in video and data from Paul Dumbrell's car, his teammate, all weekend as he comes to grips with a supercar around this venue. Yeah, some motorsport drivers haven't been overly stoked with the performance of their cars this weekend. That's why they've been a little bit nervous. And uh, they continue to work on that this morning in the warm-up. Just trying to get the race balance as required. And they all felt that uh, they were struggling with the same things, a bit of imbalance under brakes at the end of Conrad Strait. Teamwork becomes a factor in this one as well. Some of the regular members of the Super 2 crews on these cars will blend with the main game team. So Matt White Racing, for example, some of its crew will be working with okay, some from Nissan Motorsport. Here we go. About to rock the mountain. Supercars. Dunlop Super 2. 250 kilometers to come. Jack LeBrock makes a nice start. So too does Macaulay Jones. Hazelwood. Splitting them though is Dumbrell and he gets the advantage. What a start by Dumbrell. Dives, fires it up the inside and will take the lead. As Cam said on the start line, he's won this race three years straight. He's going for four in a row. What a start by Dumbrell. That is unbelievable. Paul Dumbrell sliced down the middle. I thought Hazelwood had it. I thought LeBron didn't get away badly. But Dumbrell just came down the middle, breaks so late. I thought he was going to run wide and managed to get the front of that car tipped into turn one and has had a great run up mountain straight for the first time. Through the cutting. Tires will still be coming up the temperature. They all stream through. Doesn't look like Jack Perkins had a great start. He's dropped a couple of spots. Back to ninth behind Jack Smith, in fact, as Dumbrell leads them over the top for the first time. They plunge down near the great Hazelwood. Then LeBrock. Jordan Boyce doing a nice job there in the Caltex Commodore. He stepped up from the third tier of the series, the V8 Touring Cars, where he's currently fifth in that championship. 20 years of age from Albury. He's 11th in this race. Nice work. Through the dipper. Jack Smith pretty wide there with Perkins right behind him. Now, how hard is Paul Dumbrell going to push here at the beginning of this 41 laps? On board with forward behind Macaulay Jones down Conrad for the first time up through the 
sequential Albans gearbox flat we'll see some lights come up on the rev car rev dash just there he backed off early just waiting still for some of that temperature to come in and also potentially as we referenced already he might be already looking to save some fuel we'll keep a close eye on that one so McCauley goes defensive down to Murray's for the first time. Forward will look to have a bit of a cross, can't get that done. Gee, the onboard from forward has looked fluid, has looked smooth all weekend. He is really comfortable in this car, and it's been that way since they rolled it out of the transporter. He's chasing, he's pushing McCauley Jones hard. There's a bit of a gap here, as you can see. He won't want the gap to get too big. Jones has had a good run, that is Andrew. Out of turn one for the first time. This time forward, slightly defensive, into turn two. Griffiths bends, clean through there. Here's that restart, oh, the start. Watch Dumbrell, right up your screen. Oh, Rob got away, no, something happened there, he hesitated. Did he miss a gear or something? I'm not quite sure, but you saw the nose drop after he'd launched. He launched very cleanly. It was better than Hazelwood's, but then the car stops there. And then the other cars accelerate past. Dumbrell hooked up. Watch the way. Watch this from Hazelwood. And then look to the inside. Here is on the left. The camera swings around to see Dumbrell to slice his way through. LeBrock was still there. But here we go. Oh, it uh, yeah, right. Okay, so it dropped in the RPM. He had to give it a clutch just to get it going again. It looked like he got away cleanly, but then he just released too much load too early by releasing the clutch pedal, and the RPM and the engine just dived away. So, unfortunately for LeBron, that pole position has been uh, thrown away at the moment. Now, is forward erring on the side of just a little bit of economy here. He's not keeping that pressure. He's with McCauley Jones, but I thought he might try and make a move and go after his teammate LeBrock and Hazelwood. Oh, McCauley's got off the road. They have been struggling a little bit, the BJR boys. And this has given forward. What happened there? Now, struggling to understand, did forward actually make contact with McCauley? Because it looks like he released, he should have gone around the outside of him after McCauley was off the road. So could that have been a redress? He Maybe gets it done now. Maybe that was a redress, potentially. And then McCauley's made another mistake, or made a mistake, down at Murray's corner, which has given the ultimate the advantage. So I'm sure we'll have another look at that one. I think potentially that ultimate is the faster car at the moment, and he needed to get past Jones just to set into a rhythm and look after what he's got. So let's take a... No. No, he's all by himself. So how did he get back in front? Let's have a look here to see. McCauley off the road. Looks to come back on. Oh, he's run wide. He's run off the road. Going around the outside. So, okay, that answers all the questions. So both of them. One on the entry to the chase, one on the exit. A couple of moments. So he's had to run offline to go and give McCauley room because he could see that the, the Commodore was going to make its way back on the road. And that's just maybe got him into the dirty stuff just on the outside of the racing line and forced him up onto the curb. And then McCauley comes down here with probably with dirty tyres. Breaks a little bit late, trying to get that spot back. And uh, reverses those positions again. All good for Jack Perkins. While they're fighting and having those dramas, he's closed in. So that's become almost a... You can see there's Jack there. Yep. Almost a five-way train. Now, from the pit lane, that's Nathan Morecambe. Remember, we saw him parked up there. He's last in the field at the moment, chasing Brody Kostecki, and he's... Couple of seconds behind him. That's Brody there in the Blue Falcon, run by Matt Stone Racing. Some damage to Charter's Commodore as he chases Mason Barbera.
good potential strategy choice there by Eagles to Motorsport to hold Nathan in the in the lane. Save that little bit of fuel that was going to take. Oh, <laughs> oh Jordan, Jordan Voss wide. Save that bit of fuel that they were going to use. Oh, that's Dumbrell. off the road. Dumbrell down at turn one. He's Death got a Brown. problem. No, I think he's just been deep off the road. Wow. That puts him back to eighth. Julie in there, lift of screen, the sunglasses. They have been struggling to pull these cars up. So we've got a new race leader, Todd Hazelwood, leads from Jack LeBrock. Let's try and understand what happened here. Dumbrell was leading. Yeah, inside front. Pretty early on the piece, and he's, yeah, he's gone very deep into the, the sand trap on board. See that from Todd Hazelwood's point of view. Being handed the race lead quite comfortably. Thank you very much. Dumbrell's dropped to eighth as a result. Uncharacteristic, really, for the championship leader. Good work to get it out. They've lost a huge amount of ground. Roland Dane watching on. Andrew Simpson, team boss for the Team Vortex squad. Sectors popping up here for LeBrock and forward. The Nissans look fast at the moment, but it's young Todd Hazelwood leading the way in the big mate Commodore. Corley Jones holding down, down in fourth position ahead of Andrew Jones. Is this group towards the rear of the field that we were talking about? The red entry is Jack Smith, who's currently 10th. And a nice bit of work by Brad Jones racing to repair that car overnight after the crash in qualifying yesterday. Is that uh, rear bumper waving in the wind on Matt Charter's car? I don't think that's really too much of an issue. I'm sure the officials will be looking at it as he's down the outside. Uh, Mason Barbera, they touch under brakes. Brody Kostecki will get a bit of a run. Alongside Charter now. And we'll clearly have the line for turn one. Gets it done nicely. Battles all the way through the field. We've become so accustomed to seeing it. Everyone fighting for every single position. It's a bit of a depleted field this weekend because of all the non-championship status and other guys doing also wildcard entries this year has been fantastic for the Virgin Australia Supercars oh, has. Championship and an awesome opportunity that is going to continue next year. We've seen Todd Hazelwood have a crack at that. We've seen Jack LeBrock do it. We've seen Shay Davies do it as well. Huge learning experience for all these young drivers and a great initiative by Supercars. Brody actually, his car falls under the same fold, the Matt Stone Racing Operation. And our race leader is in that team, Todd Hazel with the big mate Commodore. It's a newer generation car. The older FG Falcon Kostecki is running. Campaigned last year by Adam Marjoram. We go back here and see Jack Perkins currently in seventh place, chasing Will Brown. Ahead of him, Andrew Jones, the 37-year-old, not taking part in the endurance events in the Super Cheap Auto 1000 this year and the Pertec Enduro Cup as he's done in recent time for Brad Jones Racing, just focusing on Dunlop Super 2. He's doing a bit of work for us in our big screen TV coverage over the weekend. And some asking whether this may be his final racing appearance at the mountain. He won't be lost to motorsport, that's for sure. Huge wealth of experience and insights and has been helping Jack Smith a great deal. I've got very similar setups in car 21 and car 8. He's mentored him, tutored Smith, who you'll recall had a massive crash here last year at the mountain in this race. It's a, a frightening sort of baptism for him in this in this category, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. But he's recovered well. Been learning this year, work, working with Paul Forge, very very experienced engineer. Then they, and he has been impressed with the way he's been moving forward and taking everything on. He's come a long way in 12 months. There's no doubt about it. We continue on. Bryce Forward has just set the fastest lap of the race. He's into the seventh of this race with five laps in. 
their targeting stops around about lap 17 or 18, depending. That's what some of have told us it will depend on safety cars and the like. That was certainly the plan for the Yellow Alliance truck parts entry there of Andrew Jones, who sits fifth as our coverage of the Dunlop Super 2 race from the mountain continues. Young guy here from Toowoomba in Queensland, fresh out of the Formula 4 Championship and the Toyota 86 Series where he clinched both titles in 2016. Jack Perkins zeroing in on these two as well. Your partner, James Courtney, in car 22 for the Boost Mobile One HSV team in the 1000 tomorrow. Good combo, that one. Brown stalking the Alliance Truck Parts entry of Andrew Jones at the moment. Dumbrell starting to sneak up on the back of Jack Perkins, recovering from that unusual error. We don't usually see him make too many mistakes, but that one was costly all the way from the front of the field after that amazing start and now he's having to fight back some uh, interesting sectors still coming up on the screens the Nissan seem to be trading purple sectors Rusty again forward lowered the mark across the top of the mountain he has been so fast this was an easy pass right here by Dumbrell Jack Perkins not putting up much of a fight He's been struggling with the balance of that car. He actually said he was a bit scared of it this morning, didn't he? In the warm-up for this race. They've uh, made some changes. It looks a little bit better. I hope he's a bit more comfortable in there at the moment. So now LeBron, he goes into the sevens as well. 207.9 forward. He was in the sevens on that lap as well. It's two laps in a row for the Middies Ultima. Those guys looking very comfortable and smooth at the moment. And in control, Hazelwood just ahead of them. So the gaps are a 0.8 of a second. Hazelwood to LeBrock with forward a further three and a half seconds back. We'll get down to Cameron Van Dugan. Yeah, guys, the crew from Middies uh, on Bryce Forward confirm that they are in a conservation mode at the moment, but they are at pains to tell me they were not concerned over fuel economy. Wow. We were a little worried after interviews this morning with... Rihanna and Matt White about what, what it would be like. Have a look at the attitude from Hazelwood. He had a bit of a flighty start to the weekend, I think it'd be fair to say, in this car. Murph, didn't he? He was busy at the wheel when we saw him in practice and qualifying. Brushed the wall at one point in the first sector. But doing a nice job at the moment. Leads by 0.9 over Jack LeBrock. And Bryce Forward rounding out the top three, but they've got margin over Forward. Here and there, never, never. One of the smoothest operators you'll see in this class. Jack LeBrock, 25 from Melbourne, came through the Erebus Academy and was runner-up in this championship last year. He looked at one point like he might win the title, but his then teammate swung back. That bodywork's gone from Matt Charter's car. And Gary Jacobson went on to win the title. Jacobson has been competing oh, this year off. in Super 2, but he's not contesting this race. He's focused on driving with Jason Bright in the 1000. Oh, Charter all over the back of oh, Mason Barbera. Did he touch him? Or did he just force him into making the smallest of mistakes? We heard the tyres squealing. These guys are having a, a royal battle. I think the sticky had just been off the road ahead of them. He's gone off again. We hear Paul Dumbrell has rejoined yeah. after going off the track again. Well, Perkins, Perkins is way down the road and Jake Kostecki is now ahead of him. So, another drama. Same place. Yep, same place, turn one. Can't pull it up. The car must be incredibly difficult to get a feel for on the initial brake pressure. Here's this uh, piece of rear bumper departing. Matt Charter's car. There is a house somewhere about there oh, on the nearly... main straight with lots of memorabilia. The big fans there. Yeah, <laughs> that, they'll be one that. It, exactly. That's going straight to the garage, straight to the pool room. Yep. Unfortunately, he didn't stand up in front of our camera, so we could uh, give one of his sponsors a plug. But oh, oh it's ruined our shot. <laughs> what are we going to do? Meantime, here's our race leader, big mate Commodore. Now got a second. He's had a good run across the top. Todd Hazelwood. 
a second over Jack LeBrock. And you can see they're well clear of Bryce Forward. Is Forward playing a little bit of conservation here, just trying maybe to save a little bit of fuel. Reap. Yeah, and as we have the focus at the moment on this Super 2 race, the work continues on the Boost Mobile Mobile of James Courtney. They are continuing with that engine change. The engine change was required because after they did an initial engine change on Thursday evening, they were suffering with a vibration. They did a, a transaxial change, a tail shaft change, and the vibration continued as the weekend unfolded. So they've done an engine change just purely for safety, and, and we are building up to the top 10 shootout this afternoon. No real rush with the guys. There's plenty of time to get this done, but the work does continue. We know these boys will be involved in the pit stop for Jack Perkins, who will co-drive, of course, with James Courtney. Very experienced guys. Andy Mack are there, Andrew McDonald, Justin Burns. Uh, these boys will be involved with the pit stop, remembering the crews merge. Three, uh, sorry, three of the boys from the main championship will join up with two guys from the Super 2 championship for these pit stops that we'll be expecting very shortly. Rihanna time this battle continues in the Caltex Commodore. He took the reins of the Caltex Commodore at the Sandown round of the championship. That's Jordan Boys. He's 20, currently fifth in the V8 Touring Car Series with one round remaining there. He's a young guy, 20. And it's only two rounds in. He's doing a nice job to keep those guys behind him. Charter's been around longer Ooh, in this class. Wide. wide there. Second of the Dragon Motorsport entries, Jack Perkins really helping him. Charter is not ideally placed here. Oh, Boys with a better line. Don't be out there, Matt. They're having a battle. I reckon we're going to see a few more position changes between these three. And uh, how far behind is Nathan Morecambe? So he's four seconds behind this group. There's Morecambe. And playing a bit of a strategy. Game. I'll turn it to everybody else by starting from the pit lane. Brody Kostecki to stuff the road. Mason Barbera on the tail of, of this trio. He's driving for the Wilson Security Gary Rogers Motorsport operation. And it's just the one car for them this weekend. Typically it's uh, he and Richard Musket. He was fifth in the V8 Utes Championship last year. Mason Barbera with two wins and a pole position. But boys, he's, he's, he's struggling to get his rhythm back. He's losing the ability to put that car exactly where he wants to continue the flow and he's probably looking at his mirrors too much at Matt Charter from behind I think. We'll just get uh, straight back down the lane. Cameron's got an update. Just oh. been following up. Oh yeah. sorry Cam. Jack Perkins gone off the road down at the chase. So a drama for him also. We've seen Paul Dumbrell go off the road twice and the Titan tray entry. Smith might get him here. Not has quite. had a drama. As this battle rages on, Charter on Boyce. Side by side, down to Murray's corner. How's this going to end? Barbera is going to take advantage. Charter goes wide, loses out. So, another change in positions for these three. Nice lap times in the background for Nathan Morecambe, who is closing in on this group after starting from the lane. Let's get that information now from Cam. Yeah, on the 88, guys, I just checked in to see if there was a brake issue. Brakes have been a big story here this weekend, particularly for the main game. They said that the team have told me that he hasn't complained about a brake pedal issue. They think he might have marked a tyre just by driving a little too hard. For information, they're using the same pad as the uh, main game, the PMUs, but they do do it use a different rotor for these cars. Cam, just expand on that for us, because I know it's a story that you've uh, you've followed across the weekend, and a couple of outlets are, are reporting yeah. a bit more about this now, aren't they? Yeah, we, what we see is there's, a, there's an issue with the rotor. They use a 72 vein rotor in the main game and only a 60 vein rotor in the Super 2 category. We've seen cracking in the middle of the rotor. Murph, you can tell us a bit more about that, normally on the outer edges, but some big concerns and they're putting it down to a pad material with friction on the rotor and the rotor having some weak spots in the middle. Yeah, so there is a few options, you know, for the pad material you can use, different manufacturers to clamp onto those big AP rotors. Here is the replay, early lockup on the left side for Jack Perkins, and then the right, and he fires it through the sand trap. So maybe got on the brake pedal while he still had a bit of weight transferred to the left-hand side of the car, locked the right front, and then as he was trying to arrest it, it uh, grabbed the, right, uh, the left one as well. So unfortunate for Jack Perkins, still having a bit of a struggle in that car. So yeah, the brake situation, we'll wait and see how that plays out, but clearly 
Dumbrell having a few dramas this weekend. Oh, this is brave stuff. Charter having a look on Barbera into the chase. Approaching 300 kilometres an hour. The pair of them side by side. Gives Jordan Boyce a little bit of breathing space and Morecambe closes in even more now after starting from the lane. I hope they're enjoying this because uh, <laughs> it's freezing. It's pretty entertaining. I, I've lost count of how many times this position, these positions have changed. And this has given the opportunity for Jordan Boyce to get away, hopefully regather some, mo uh, some rhythm and just get back into his groove because he was really struggling before with that pressure from Charter. So... Eyes forward, Jordan. Don't look behind. And uh, focus on what is right ahead of you. As the battle continues up the front, still Todd Hazelwood leaving, uh, leading Jack LeBrock. Beautiful view from the voice. Uh, Bear has dropped back from Jordan Boyce and Charter. Hustling, hassling this Dragon oh. Motorsport Commodore. Boys goes defensive, middle of the well, road, I makes it hard. I don't think he meant to, Rusty. I think that was just where the car ended up. I don't think he planned to cover there. Looking in the rearview mirror. So it's a bit of a nightmare in terms of where do you look, because there's lots of great battles happening in this Dunlop Super 2 Series race at the moment. This is Jordan Boyce, position 12 in car 98. He has his hands full because Matt Charter, this is the body work. Oh, oh lock up, Boyce. big lock up. Does he get to the corner? He does. He's going to slow up Charter through the middle and have to run wide. Charter will finally get clear of this battle in the faster car, no doubt. The gap that he pulled on Barbera to then catch up to Boyce. The oh, he's got off. off. Straight ahead. Not coming out of there. Left front. Oh, no, Matt. How disappointing. He cleared the battle. He cleared the battle required. Now, the safety Teams. car is going to be deployed, and there will be pit stops here for sure. Now, so we're still waiting for that to be confirmed. There it is now. So the safety car is going to be put out there, the Vodafone for safety car. To his credit, he Charter. was relentless in that battle. It's a shame this happened. I, am, I think he's missed his brake mark completely. It didn't slow down. I'm not sure. This is the reaction. So left of screen. Where's McDougal? Yep. And in the beard, with the beard, I should say. That's Matt Stone, team owner. On board with our race leader, who had a master 3.3 second advantage over Jack LeBrock. But from a timing point of view, Murph, I you'd think they would want to have done more laps. Well, it depends what, they, what they're thinking about their fuel situation now. Yeah. Let's just keep an eye on the replay of Todd Hazelwood across the top. just before the safety car was called, having a bit of a moment there, pushing hard across Skyline. Great bit of in-car footage. Here it is from the external shot. Oh, a little bit loose. Not afraid, is he? Not at all. So, oh, so Smith has backed right off. Now, has he got a problem, or is that a strategic plan? He's back in 10th. Now, so bear in mind, on? he's the third car for Brad Jones Racing. So Hazelwood, Def, they've made a call. They've chosen, and he's going to come back out. LeBron shadows him. Good job by the big mate crew. The go to work, cars. obviously, as we've uh, talked about and Rihanna spoke about earlier. Not the same situation as what it would be that we'll see tomorrow in the main game. Restricted amount of crew allowed to operate here in combination with the main game guys who are doing the refuelling. So McCauley Jones on his way. So is LeBrock. And McCauley has jumped LeBrock. So LeBrock stopped very long. So Andrew comes out, so does McCauley. The big question mark you were kind of tipping before was, was Jack Smith deliberately slowing to buy a bit of time? Well, if he was, he will be penalised for that because you're not allowed to um, on purpose slow other cars on the track 
from the advantage of someone else. So uh, he was excessively slow. We'll clarify that. We'll see. Hopefully, he hasn't got a problem in car 21. Maybe he does. So Jack Perkins getting the tank topped up. So let's have a look again there here. Kostecki is eager to get going. That's Brody Kostecki, cousin to Jake and Kurt. Jake has been at the wheel of the 55, but I think you'll I think there's been a driver change there now. Kurt is at the wheel of car 55. So this is Brody. Nathan Morecambe comes in after starting from the lane. Yeah, yeah, right dust coming off that wheel when it was taken off. Going. All right. So there was a, yeah, oh, get to the bottom That's of that one. Maybe uh, Cam now, or mate. Rihanna can chase that up down there on if there was an issue with Smith and what the go was there because obviously the safety car was nowhere to be seen and the car that was off the road was down at turn, the last turn. So you can see how spread out they are. Here's the... Vodafone safety car forward didn't stop. Neither did Dumbrell. So did the rear wheel spin here for Jack Smith? I thought I could see it before. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. How will that be viewed? So by engage, engage the gear and that uh, just turn the wheels. So Vodafone safety car on track. Forward has not stopped. Neither has Paul Dumbrell. First of those that has is Macaulay Jones. So, okay. Rice Ford will rejoin the back of the queue here, and we understand that the lights will go out on the safety car this time around, and hopefully we'll get a restart. Dunlop Super 2, 55 under investigation for a pit lane infringement. That's Kurt Kostecki currently in seventh place. They've had a driver change there. Looked like Jake started the race for them. Kurt at the wheel now, so we'll try and clarify what happened with the 55 in the, the stop. Kostecki Brothers Racing, ex Red Bull Commodore. How's the Blackwoods awesome Express <laughs> Cam Cat? It's fantastic. It runs long back towards the museum end of Mount Panorama. It's dry here at Bathurst at the moment. Some predictions of rain tomorrow. So lights still on the Vodafone Porsche safety car. We're anticipating a restart this time around. We'll just keep an eye on that for you in the meantime. Back to the lane and Cameron. 55 of Kurt and Jake Kostecki's under investigation for wheels spinning while it was on the air jacks. I was standing right there on the spot. It was after Kurt had got into the car. He must have knocked the gear lever. It was spinning quite wildly. Now, Cam, it was minor, but it looked as though the same thing happened for the 21 of Jack Smith. So we might get you to, uh, to follow that up one uh, up for us as well. Lights out, accelerate away from the field car, 88 to hold 80. That's the voice of Michael Massey, race director in race control. Oh, so no more weaving or braking or warming of tyres from that point onwards. Inside race control, Craig Baird in the black vest there in the middle. Controlling the field, Paul Dumbrell, who has not stopped. The remaining cars in this field, with the exception of Matt Charter, who went off and triggered the safety car, the rest have all completed a pit stop. Macaulay Jones, the first of those in the queue behind Paul, obviously, that's got the stop out of the way. And an observation from a seasoned campaigner, a guy who's won at the mountain here before, Paul Morris. That the 120 litre tank in the older car of Brody Kostecki could put him in a good position here. A few people asleep at the restart. Paul Dumbrell pulls the trigger nice and early. Andrew Jones has left a massive gap as Charter goes to the lane. And LeBrock and Hazel would have reversed positions from that pit stop. Macaulay Jones has had a huge jump forward. I wonder if they short filled that car. I'm not sure. Just their pit stop was that much better for Macaulay to have jumped that far up during that sequence of stops. Lane drive through penalty for car number 55, spinning wheels during its pit stop. You heard it, that's for Kurt Kostecki, currently in seventh position, what a blow. Drive through penalty for car 55. 
LeBrock keeps that pressure on McCauley Jones. And that's because Dumbrell's already eked out an advantage of one second. Brilliant on the restart, Paul Dumbrell. I'm not sure at this stage LeBrock's going to be too worried about what Dumbrell is doing, knowing that uh, he hasn't made that first stop. He will want to clear McCauley Jones quite quickly. We saw that McCauley's car was a, probably a little bit more of a handful than what the Ultima was earlier on in that first stint. So we'll see if these guys get bunched up. Hazelwood, he'll be putting pressure very quickly on LeBron wanting to either force him into a mistake or make a move and get his nose back out in front. All the way down to the elbow. The road just plummets away underneath you. And then continues down for that first half of Conrad Strait. Just starting to flatten now. And then back up over the hump, halfway down Conrod. Cars get a little bit light, and then here they are, approaching the chase. What a shot. Sixty Ks an hour on any other day of the year, or yeah. there's only a hand few, a handful of events at this wonderful venue throughout the season. That's for the penalty. That's Kurt Kostecki making his way back into the lane for those wheels spinning during the pit stop. They get close to 300 there on the run into the chase. Beautiful, beautiful stuff to watch. 1.2 seconds between Dumbrell and Jones now. There was a half a second advantage there in lap time on the restart. 28.9 for Dumbrell, Jones, LeBrock and Hazelwood all in the mid 109s so clear air out front for Dumbrell is a good thing at the moment as they climb back up to the cutting the battle go. here for these three so 21 as well has been investigated no further action taking place to be a bit of a relief for BJR and Jack Smith Brown a full rotation we're hearing so that's the, the reason for it we saw that little moment for it and worried but uh, on he goes and Jack Smith currently in eighth place doing a nice job for Brad Jones racing there through the dipper two wheel in it a few different lines as you can see there's forward the back of the pack after taking that pit stop. Oh, and some lock up in the background. Definitely some tyres squealing. Forwards moved forward against Nathan Morecambe. And is now on the back of Jordan Boyce. The young man from Darwin doing a fine job in that car. has been very fast this weekend. Now it's a strategy game to see how this plays out. We're uncertain. There's a lock up by Boyce. Down to the chase. He's go oh, just missed the back of Brody Kostecki. And gives forward that position. Makes his way back onto the road in the Caltex racer, but costly, very, very costly. As Morecambe comes down to the last turn to complete another lap. Dumbrell not managing to get the gap any larger on that lap. Macaulay Jones slightly faster than the race leader on that one. And we'll get back down to the lane, Rihanna. Yeah, just wanted to tidy up a couple of things from those pit stops. Macaulay Jones definitely four tyres and fuel. They were just extremely fast. They kind of blew everyone away up and down pit lane. Everybody is going to need to take a second stop to take on fuel. Obviously, apart from Paul Dumbrell at the moment, I've had a quick chat to Rachel Eggleston. They're going to leave him out as long as possible, hoping to only have to do one pit stop. And lots of people looking at Brody Kostecki. He certainly does have an advantage to do that older generation car. So definitely Paul Morris is on the on the spot with that one. Brody's currently 10th. Rihanna doing a nice job. Cousin to Jake and Kurt. You're riding in the middies entry. Young Bryce Fullwood from Darwin chasing Kostecki up in front of him. So there you have it. The BJR boys getting the job done very, very briskly. 
end, giving the quality the advantage. I mean, that was, we're not talking tenths of seconds, that was seconds and upon seconds faster to achieve what he had because Hazelwood wasn't slow getting back to the lane. And uh, just the stop time in the pit box was the difference. Oh, forward having a look, having a think about it. You could see the wheel waving. It's meant Kostecki took a bit of a look in his mirror, I reckon. He's got the blink, the indicator on. There you go, nice Move play. Over. Yeah, he did, and he touched the brake pedal as well. So, he's made that very easy. Probably did a little bit too much. He's probably lost a bit of time there, but well done. Brody Kostecki forward, clearly the faster car at the moment. Brody originally comes from Perth, Murph, and he spent some time racing late models and the like in the United States. He's come back in recent time to focus on the Dunlop Super 2 Championship. And there's a bit of a demon by all accounts on the simulator at McElroy Racing on the Gold Coast. Pretty handy. Corley Jones just laying down the benchmark time so far for the race. Lowering it to a 207.5. LeBrock on that lap, 207.8. You can see that gap's just creeped out ever so slightly. Dumbrell was in the sevens as well with a 207.6. So these four cars at the front really pushing on at the moment. Andrew Jones having a bit of a struggle. He's a couple of seconds away from that, or a second and a half away. Perkins in the background trying to close up as well. And forwards move past Barbera. That's two cars within half a lap. And he's doing it smoothly. You mentioned before about how good he looks at the moment in the seat and how smooth and controlled. You can see the movements on the wheel. His gear shifts look calm and collected. So this is up mountain straight, the Ultima. Getting the toe off the Commodore. And then leaves it late down the inside line. Well done, Bryce Forward. There's the fuel rigs being used to get the fuel inside these Super 2 cars. Dave Stewart checking the rigs and the measurements. Gets another one done. Forward moves up into position 8 ahead of Jack Smith. And question yes, mark I there. Is yeah. I think I know what that's for. Just uh, the long shot up Conrod Strait when the safety car was released. We saw a couple of cars weaving after Michael Massey got on the radio and informed everybody that. Uh, car number 21 for a safety car restart infringement. And we're also displaying the black flag for a pit lane drive through penalty to car 98 for a safety lights car out. restart infringement. Now lights are out, there's 21. Yep. You can still weaving quite aggressively at that point. And Jordan Boyce too. And Jordan Boyce. So he'll, he'll be in a bit of trouble for that. That's a drive through. So that's his trouble. And he's, yeah. So that's probably a little bit of rookie stuff. But uh, Paul Jack Smith, he was just a little bit out of sync. Brown to the lane. Paul Brown making his way in for a pit stop. He's been chasing Andrew Jones for the better part of this race and done a very good job. But he's been in the lane already. Yeah. So is this a so this is fuel going in? I think we'll get a shot in a second. So they're topping that car up. That's a strategic call by Wilson Motorsport. He will go to the finish. So he's fueled now right to the finish. Now if a safety car comes out. It's going to play into his hands quite nicely. Remember, Bryce Fullwood as well did one extra lap under safety car, didn't he, compared yeah. to his teammate Jack LeBrock. And now he's making hay coming through the field. He's now up to seventh, so he's been showing great speed, and that's been pushing him forward. What's the last lap times? Looking at the sectors, McCauley Jones. A little bit slower on that lap up the hill but managed to maintain good time across the mountain. Adjustments there for Todd Hazelwood and the big mate Commodore. 18, incidentally, is Matt Charter, who you saw go off at the final turn before. Some sort of uh, blue or error in the pit stop, so a uh, pit lane penalty for car 18, a pit stop infringement. Closing up under brakes, Hazelwood on LeBrock. 
Bryce Forward setting the new benchmark for the middle sector. He has been rapid across the mountain all weekend. And he's continued to do it with a fresh set of tyres on the car. So the times for that lap. Dumbrell still out front. Remember, he's still got to stop. He's the only car on the field that hasn't been to the lane. 207.7. Corley Jones, 207.9. LeBrock a bit faster on that one. 207.6. That's his fastest lap of the race. And as you can see, the gap between these three cars, second, third, and fourth. Only a few car lengths. So here's the penalties. Is this tough for the youngsters, given how far back in the queue they were? Can they see that far down the road? Rules are rules. Yeah. And this is how you learn. This is how you learn to fall into line with what's required of you if you make the main game. It can come down to a radio call, though, too. So if the radio call hasn't come fast enough, saying that, you do need to be watching all the time down the road. So, yeah, tough calls, no question, because there was no harm nor foul, really. But uh, in the main game, same thing applies. In the red shirt, that's Paul Forgey, an engineer with a huge amount of experience in this sport with Brad Jones these days. There he is, and of course was in Marcus Ambrose's corner when Marcus won his championships. Looked like Molly Taylor in the background there too, was it? Australian Rally Champion, perhaps. Let's have a close look, we go. McCauley missing the apex, locking the inside front. Still carried some decent speed by the looks of it. So all these guys still very, very close in the lap time. No one's really showing any kind of advantage at the moment. There's the number of times we've seen the cars in the lane, and one does stand out. The 88 championship leader, Paul Dumbrell, who was leading the race at the start, managed to get it wrong down at turn one twice. Very costly mistake. Put him out of sync. And you've got to wonder when, when Eaglesons are going to make the move here from a pit stop point. Well, I think they're going to run well. along. They'll, they'll run this car until it's nearly empty. And that's really the, what they're going to be forced into do. So hopefully, they're hoping for a safety car and it, uh, they're hoping that it'll come at the time that they can fill this car and get it to the finish. Which is probably now. I mean, they can uh, definitely do. 21 laps or 20 laps on a tank of fuel that's not a problem but they'll want to now hope for that safety car situation he's got a two second advantage i think he obviously would have been hoping to build a bit more than that over these guys at the moment jones lebrock and hazel would have done well to to minimize the impact Andrew Jones sits in fifth, then Jack Perkins. Bryce Forward has managed to get to seventh. We go back and have a look here at the 38. Now remember, Will Brown has already completed another stop. It's a handful of them that have two stops. So there must be a concern. And for, for more, that's just Matt Charters going in through the lane. There must be a concern by multiple teams about the, the fuel situation. And as Forward now is caught right up behind Jack Perkins at a fair rate of knots. This looks effortless in the Altima over yeah. the top for forward, and it has done all weekend. Yeah, well, he's struggling. Look at the difference in the times, too. You see the comparisons. Jack really not happy at all. Oh. As forward slices down the inside. Not an easy place to do it, especially on someone who's as experienced as Jack Perkins. And you could see Jack had nothing in his arsenal to stop that move from happening. So he'll be getting a bit frustrated on board. Titan Trey effort at the moment. Will Jack, he'll be looking forward to getting back aboard the Boost Mobile entry with uh, James Courtney. And here he is on pit row now. The 88, the race leader at the time, is now dropping down the order as he makes his way, looking from the Blackwoods Express, Camcat, all the way down at 40 k's an hour, takes forever. We'll get Cameron or Rihanna to check the fuel drop for us and hopefully he can squeeze the minimum in here, get everything he needs. And Bryce forward in the lane as well. There you go, you can see the midis entry in the background. Well, that'll be a splash, he's there obviously. Yeah. 
Well, that's answered the question. There was no doubt about the need for the Nissan to do an extra little stop, and they've chosen to do it right now. I love that. Ben Eagleston on the tools. Team they boss, know, they know this is going to be a long stop for Dumbrell, too. So that's a clever strategy, I think, on the part of, of Matt White. Charter pulling over on Conrod. Now, he'd just been in the lane moments ago, so some sort of issue when he's rejoined. Perkins in the lane also. So a long fill to get home, which he'll be able to do now. Oh, Perkins with an issue. He's unstrapping too. I think that's game over, is it? For Jack Perkins. Yep, game over. What a shame. Dumbrell still sitting there. Takes forever. Obviously can't fuel and do the tyre change at the same time. And, and the, here's the safety car. Oh, timing. So that's the voice of Michael Massey. And obviously concern about where Charter's car is. How is this going to play? <laughs> I haven't got the head on my shoulders to work it out because the safety car is out. We would expect to see LeBrock come to the lane. Well done. Well played. Well played. And that's obviously in relation, I would say, to Bryce. Is that right? And what's going to happen here? So is... here they come. Yep. So they know they have to make that extra splash. How's this going to work for forward and Hazelwood? They're all in. McCauley using every bit of road and more as he came through the zigzag. The s bends in the lane. Matt White Motorsport supporters giving a wave, keeping an eye on they saw Jack us. LeBrock. Yeah. Uh, Andrew in as well. Where is forward on the racetrack? How's this going to work? There was obviously the deficit that he had from stopping out of sync earlier, having to pass all those cars. LeBrock's away. Hazelwood hasn't stopped yet. Oh, can, how's that? A near miss as Jones was pulling in. Hazelwood now plugged in. Are they going to get him away? No, he's going to have to fall in behind. So he comes away behind LeBrock. It's going to be a sprint to the finish. We still haven't seen forward. Those guys have been released. This has worked well. Brody kostecki has been in the lane as well. There's Jordan Boyce coming in. So there, that answers Murph's question in relation to Bryce Forward. And the other guy who'd taken service as well, Will Brown, a lap or two prior to Bryce. So slot back, he's ahead of Mason Barbera. So that makes him fifth. So Forward's fifth. So he hasn't worked out too badly. And they're all going to be left line astern behind the Porsche Vodafone safety car for the final sprint. Everyone fueled to the finish. Update on the Eggleston team, guys. All of their cars have met the fuel drop, and all of those cars are good to go to the end. So all Eggleston cars. Nice work. Thanks, Cam. So, Paulie Jones, if you've just joined us, Dunlop Super 2 at the completion of the second stop. So we take a look at this here. Nissan Motorsport team on Jack LeBrock's car. Yeah, near miss with Andrew Jones, who was slotting in to take the spot there at BJR. Matt Charter, his weekend has not been a good one with a couple of failures. And now it ends here on the side of the road at Conrod. They're all lined up for something good. <laughs> not what it is, but... Uh, there's plenty of things to do here at Bathurst. Plenty of amazing displays. The cars on the track are just one part of the whole deal. There's Brad Jones. This boy is out the front at the moment, leading the pack. McCauley is just 23 years of age from Albury. He works enormously hard at his racing. Best result in recent times, second in Adelaide earlier in the year in this championship. And we know he'll partner with Nick Perkat in the Super Cheap Auto 1000. Mark Skate describing them before as a bit of a smoky in the pack. They could be really strong tomorrow in the big one. Just waiting to see what happens with the Vodafone safety car here. The Porsche continues to lead the field around the mountain on a massive Saturday here. Can't wait to see who will get pole position for the great race a little later today. 
was parked right in the middle of the crowd there on Sunday morning last year. Might do that again tomorrow. Met some great fans. Some of them have been coming here yeah. and watching the race since the 1960s. Some real devotees of the sport. Kevin Bartlett, KB. Kevin Bartlett, there he is. One of the all-time legends of our game. He certainly is. He is a character, that man. Certainly is. Winner of the great race, of course. Twice a winner of the Australian Drivers' Championship or the Cam's Gold Star. And just a ripper fella to boot. Loves his motorcycle racing. It's been something of a mentor or, or certainly someone that Michael Caruso has looked up to over time. David Brabham, who's competing in the 86 series this weekend, paying a visit to Brad Jones. There's the eavesdropping there. You can see Ash Walsh in the background, who's been unfortunately reduced to being a spectator this weekend with those rib injuries. Smiles at the moment because Macaulay Jones leads the way in this Super 2 race, but we have 17 laps still to run with the Rock second. So we believe it'll be this time by that we get a restart in Dunlop Super 2. If you've just joined the coverage, it's a non-championship round this year, but the news emerging in recent weeks, Murph, it will go back to having championship status in 2018. I think the thought process was good. They were hoping we'd get some wild cards from this class into the 1,000 uh, over the weekend, but some of the guys that took the wild card option at other rounds did such a good job. They've ended up in co-driver positions for the main race. So it's great that this will go back to championship status in 2018. Paul Dumbrell's won the last three straight. Can he make it four? Shouldn't be too long. This should be the last lap behind the Vodafone safety car. We'll be back to racing. Macaulay Jones through an electrifying pit stop by the BGR team. I bet they wish they'd done that stop last night to win the $25,000 for the Pertec Endurance Cup. They were knocked out in one of the heats by DGR team Penske. In the meantime, let's uh, get down to Cam before the restart of this race. Well, we saw a few legends in the back of shop before. KB, one of the big legends of them all here at the mountain, jumping into you. Had a bit of a chat with Brad. Uh, any words of advice? Like to Bradley. You can't advise Bradley. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bradley knows it all. Back the front. And congratulations as well with Legends Lane. Yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's always good to be remembered for things past. And uh, I think the, 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 the criteria of the whole thing is that this sport, that we've got now, this supercar sport, actually started on a lower note, but now it's risen to a, well, it's not a pinnacle yet, but it's just such a competitive series. I'm just so impressed with all of the action and how technical everything is. But certainly when you compare it to what we had. And in particularly with Super 2s out there, thank you very much for a small piece of your time. That's great, thank you very much. They tried to get a chat with Jack Perkins, but he snuck off uh, to the truck. He was struggling with power steering. We know he wasn't all too happy with the, the car early this morning in warm-up. So still not too happy with the car and that power steering issue obviously uh, forcing him out of the race this afternoon. So really disappointing for Jack Perkins. Thanks for the updates, Rihanna and Cam. And didn't everyone suddenly stop weaving as soon as the lights went out? On the Vodafone Speaking Porsche safety it. car. Here he is back in the garage. We'll try and catch up with him. We'll get the race resettled for you. And McCauley controls the field. Pace Commodore from Brad Jones Racing. One of three from the team in this field. LeBrock, we know that that Nissan Altima is fast. He's off the back of a race win. Last time out at Sandown. Forward looks handy as well. Fifth in the queue in that Mini's Altima. Should be a ripper run to the flag. What has Dumbrell got? Paul Dumbrell. He's 10th in the queue. Played a different game strategically, tactically in this race. The nerves, I bet that's Brad. Sure is. Has always been one to shake that foot as the race unfolds. Just out of nerves. Here we go. Nice restart by Macaulay Jones through the final turn. Car length or two on that go-getter Altima. And away we go in Dunlop Super 2. Hazelwood eager to try and get by LeBrock if he can. Not close enough, though. 14 laps remaining. Jones leads them. No one needs to come to the lane. Everyone's fueled to the finish. All the minimums have been met. And now it's just a sprint. Has he got the pace in the pace entry? 
for Brad Jones Racing to maintain the lead. Here we go, move down the inside. Dumbrell. That's Paul Dumbrell on the bit of rubber, the fresher tyres. How far through the field can he come? We saw him, though, make some mistakes, having drama with brakes early on. Will Brown right up behind Bryce Forward, who's been driving brilliantly. And you know, Andrew's not an easy driver to get past. He makes the Alliance Truck Parts entry very wide. I'm not sure if he's got the absolute speed that he would want at the moment, but he'll put up a fight. Skyline, listen to them as they go from fourth to third. The V8's peaking 7.5, 7,500 RPM down through the S's. So much action this weekend at this section of the circuit. Hazelwood, smoothing things up from what he had the last couple of days. He was fighting this car. Matt Stone, a bit of a master with Wes McDougall on tuning the 35. Look at Mason Barbera Murph. He will have the rear view mirrors full of Paul Dumbrell, the Burson Auto Parts Commodore, right up close to the Wilson Security Commodore. Dumbrell eyeing up position seven. Lock break from oh, Hazelwood, Hazel big one. He gets it somehow. The Brock sees him, gives him room. This is what we saw last year towards the end of the main race. He's trying to forwards looking. Andrew Jones down the outside. Someone. Brown. So Hazelwood, he had a go. He showed the nose to LeBrock. LeBrock saw him. He gave him room. They both went off the road. Smart driving by Jack LeBrock. Great vision. Look where McCauley Jones is. That chaos has played right into McCauley Jones hands on board the midis entry now. As forward chases Hazelwood, Dumbrell is up to seventh. He's cleared Barbera. It's BJR one and two. Andrew kept out of the trouble. That was just ahead of him and benefited from it. Look who's on the back of the train. Paul Dumbrell, he's made up some ground in quick succession. He's on the back of his teammate, Will Brown, now. And Hazelwood's trying to recover. We have not been disappointed all year by Dunlop Super 2. Here it is, replay. Hazelwood shows the nose, locks the left front. And then's forced wide. LeBrock was giving him room. And then what's the chaos here? Look He's at tried this. to come back on. Here we go, on board. On the limiter. Yeah, there's that brake. It's locked up. He comes off the pedal to try and unlock the front. The smallest of mistakes. He's backed out of the throttle, and then Jones is on the outside, right down past all of them. Meantime, this is the move on Barbera at the chase. Paul Dumbrell in the 88 gets by. The puff of smoke from up in front. Yeah, he wasn't off by it, was it? Here's the middies Ultima forward oh. trying to make advantage. Where do I go? Three wide, nowhere. Backs out of it. Will He's Brown. Traded by Brown. Seeing Brown down the outside of it all. Oh, man, it could have been. It was like rewind at 2016, was, wasn't it? At the final few laps of the Super Chief Auto Baptist 1000. Will Brown stuck it down there, but didn't benefit from it in the end. View from the go-getter entry. Just watch his head. Watch his head. He looks. He saw the mirror. You could see him just glance over and see... Hazelwood coming down the inside. So good heads up driving by Jack LeBrock. Although he did lose out in the end. Now while we've been watching this, Will Brown has been passed by Paul Dumbrell. So Dumbrell's ahead of his teammate up into sixth position now. There you go. Forward is next on the list for Paul Dumbrell. Yeah, sweetie hands. Down at BJR. Brad's checking his phone. All the actions on the screen ahead of you, Brad. McCauley doing everything that is expected of the young man. Out front leading here at Bathurst in the 250K Mini Enduro for Dunlop Super 2 2017. The go-getter Ultima. Behind now, Andrew Jones, who's been elevated into that second position. 
So forward. And then Dumbrell behind his teammates gonna make a move here where he's been struggling today. How deep was he this time? No problems with locking the brakes by the 88 this time. So just to highlight once again, Paul has those fresher tires after playing a different game strategy-wise yeah, here. So it worked out to worked the beautifully. So he's up to sixth position, and we're hearing from race control that as a result of the safety cars we've had in this race, we'll go time certain, which is 15.42 local, uh, but we're only going to lose one lap on the current schedule of things. So it was originally 41 laps, going to be 40 by the looks of things. Well, they're going to have to get on with it then. McCauley's pulling that lead, it's 3.5 seconds over Andrew Jones. And forward using all the road, he goes defensive straight away. Dumbrell will be looking for the crisscross this time. He gets the Eagleson Motorsport car turned nicely, he's got the nose. Not quite alongside, but he's going to dive, watch this. He will dive down the inside of the Ultima. Oh, forward he holds it. Some room. Sideways uses all the road forward. Went up on the curb yeah. and that cost him. Lost some drive and that that hands it. And he stayed there. Can he keep the nose overlapped on Dumbrelli? Can the aero effect giving the Ultima the run he needs to maintain the spot? How's that? The 19-year-old from Darwin up against the two-time series champion, 35-year-old Paul Dumbrell be with the Red Bull Holden team tomorrow alongside Jamie Wincup. He was not daunted at all forward. That's a good piece of driving. And this gives him the chance now across the top. We know how good the ultimate has been at the hands of forward across the top of the mountain. Straight away, a couple of car lengths. Advantage. He now will get the chance to get his rhythm back and try to pull down the gap between he and the back of Hazelwood. How about the textbook studying going on by Will Brown too? He's following, chasing, staying in the shadow of his teammate at Eggleston, Paul Dumbrell. Andrew Jones making life tough for Jack LeBrock. Could it be a BJR 1-2 here? Can LeBrock do something about it? He's definitely got the faster car. The gap now at the 4.7. Andrew Jones struggling to maintain the speed. Dumbrell gets on to Conrad right under the wing of the Midi's Ultima. He'll get a toe for sure. The pressure's going to be on as they approach the chase. Jones with a good advantage out of Forest Elbow. It's been a tough year for Andrew in this Alliance Truck Parts Commodore, just in terms of the... I mean, the competition's been incredible. Last podium we make it was 2016 at Phillip Island for him. Could he be back on the podium, the 37-year-old, this afternoon? Would be awesome. The BJR may be a one-two, but there is a huge freight train of cars here, all eyeing up a spot on that podium. Cleaner entry this time. Who's Dad? Who's Dad talking, <laughs> talking to? to. <laughs> Kim, come on, focus. Might be Fran. Fran might be nervous. So forward managing a better downhill this time to Conrad Strait. He maintains a good little gap, a little buffer, not having to defend. Paul Dumbrell, the go-getter, Ultima. Great run, great run, shows the nose. He needs to be a bit closer. Andrew had to go deep. You see the back of the Commodore wavering under brakes as they smash the front of the car into the asphalt. Approaching turn two, massive braking force. The road there just climbs so, so quickly. You can go so deep. And again, they align a stern forward has got rid of the gap between him and Hazelwood. There's the difference between Andrew Jones and LeBrock on that last lap. What about the fact that it's 5.7 between McCauley and Andrew? Yeah, that's just, it's opening up. We'll keep an eye on the last lap time, but that sector alone, six tenths of a second in the first sector. On this lap for McCauley over Andrew. Andrew just hanging on. He's got a freight train behind him. LeBrock, Hazelwood, forward, Dumbrell, all putting pressure on. I've got a feeling it's not over yet, Rusty. Quick shot of Nick Perkat there before in the BJR bunker. He knows what it takes to win here in Dunlop Super 2. Taking those victories. Back when we had multi-races here at the Mountain in 2012. Oh, of course, McCauley will pair with him tomorrow for the big one. Dumbrell. Look at Dumbrell. He's got a run. He's got the toe. 
through the chase. He shows the nose. He's down the inside. Forward will have to give room. Dumbrell gets it done clean. Absolute maximum on the oh, wild. forward wide. They're all wide. And that was just enough. He lost that drive off the curb. And that gives Dumbrell that little bit of space he needs. Hazelwood, he's battled all year long with Dumbrell and they're about to engage again. Look Here at this. In car. Forward had nothing. He did everything right. And still Dumbrell was able to sneak it down. They're so close to running off the road. Look, he ran him. He ran him up against the white line. Not a lockup from PD. And he keeps it on the road. Superb bit of driving. And that's why he joins Win Cup in the main game as Dumbrell goes through on Jones. He looked so close before. He was. Yeah, Kim looks on. Andrew couldn't do anything about it. So LeBrock is up to second now. Macaulay Jones leads the way. Andrew Jones sits in third. And Hazelwood fourth. So it continues on. The young gun from Albury. We're reluctant to get excited about it here, but I mean, just to give you the facts, fourth on two occasions in round terms. In terms of race results, his best, a second. Adelaide, 2017. This could be a very special moment for Macaulay Jones. Let's just wait and see what happens. Right now, he enjoys a margin of 5.4 seconds, but LeBrock is bolting together some fast laps. He's just gone fastest in the first sector. Personal best across the top. It's the quickest lap, looking like it, that we've seen in the race so far. So he is chasing. And he's had no clear air, has he, the whole race. So this is the opportunity to try and breach that five second gap. Can he catch Macaulay Jones? It's a 5.2 second advantage that Macaulay Jones has over Jack LeBrock in the race to the finish in Dunlop Super 2. Some of them are getting ragged as they come through the chase. Brody Kostek, he's got his hands full here with Jordan Boyce. Someone locks a break. Coming into the final turn. 15 second time penalty for car 16. Involved in that incident that we just saw a lap ago with the 88 of Paul Dunbrell. We'll see the replay. Let's clear this up for you. So forward. Gets a good run out of the final turn. Looks to make the move on Paul Dumbrell. Locks the rears. And just, just taps right in the worst possible spot. Paul Dumbrell's car with the back of the Ultima. Sending him into a spin. Just locks the rears. Couldn't do anything about it at that point. He was on the dirty side of the track, right down the inside. PD had forced him down there. And what Went in deep. What about Dumbrell? This is full days of thunder stuff. Keep it gassed. Full 360, off you go. <laughs> Lost a bit of uh, time though, didn't he? And by the time he grabbed the gear that he needed. And the net result is a 15 second time penalty, Murph. Applied to the 16 of Bryce Forward for, for this incident with Dumbrell. You can understand what he was trying to do. He got that little run, had the overlap. But PD has been mighty in the second half of this race. Yes, Filthy. he is angry yep. with himself. Yep. After seeing Paul Dumbrell go off the road twice while leading, well, first time while leading, and then later on dropping himself way down the order at the early part of the race, his braking performance has come back. He's been so strong there. And forward, not able to keep control of the ultimate. And there it is on the screen. So 15 seconds on the limiter. Is Hazelwood. He's chasing Andrew Jones. LeBrock on the last lap. Our focus was away from it. He did a 2.07.0 Rusty. Chasing Macaulay Jones. The gap though is 5.4 seconds. I don't think he's got the time or the pace to be able to do it. Jack LeBrock, he's tried hard. There has been a race on at the restarts. And the action, as we predicted, was certainly not finished. McCauley leading comfortably. Maybe six laps remaining in this 41 lap up. As Hazelwood continues to storm the back of Andrew Jones, who's Another lead. so far doing a great job. Colin Bond there talking to the two guys driving the Bottolo 
Falcon, very much a part of one of the most memorable moments at the mountain. We're celebrating 40 years since that famed 1-2. Alan Moffat and Jackie X. Bond, of course. And that second, that sister Falcon bringing them over the line. 1-2 finish. It was amazing. And, of course, the car that Mark Winterbottom and Dean Canto will race this weekend. Oh, tipping yeah, attack that livery. That was understeer. Hazelwood had to get out of the throttle there as he came up on the approach to McPhillamy. So maybe the car's not working as well as what he would like. And that might be why he hasn't really been able to threaten Andrew Jones at this point. On board looks okay here, Murph. When it was at the, the end of Conrad before at the chase, it looked like it was vibrating. And I, I wondered if... Keep an eye on this here. I wonder if a tire's out of balance as a result of that big brake lock before. We'll see. Very likely. Yeah. Look at this. Very Watch likely. this here. It starts to vibrate. There it is. Absolutely, Rusty. It's a reasonably sizable vibration Ooh. and likely to be coming from one of the... Oh! oh that was a total mismatch there on the, the blip with the throttle and the gear shift. And he's probably very much aware obviously of that front tire that's vibrating but he needs to just calm it down grab the rhythm back that we've seen him apply so well this year he lost a bit of rhythm there as he went into the chase under brakes here's Dumbrell we should recovering give a, sh a shout out to Nathan Morecambe too here in the 54 he yeah. started from the lane and he's kept his nose clean up into sixth position great six. work Australian GT or endurance champion last year here's the Midi's entry making the move on Mason Barbera. Just a reminder too, non-championship. So the result here not going to affect Dumbrell's lead in the championship. No points change. But still, I'm sure PD uh, will be a little unimpressed with the manoeuvre. Kostecki down the inside of Morecambe. Dumbrell will get a run on his teammate. And much cleaner out of turn two. So two spots back. Instantaneously for Morecambe after we've given the, that wrap. Let's go to pit lane, Rihanna. Yeah, spot on with that call for Todd Hazelwood, Rusty. Uh, just confirmed with the team. He's got a flat spot on that tyre from that earlier lock-up, so that's uh, what's triggering that vibration there. Thank you. Stecky here <laughs> doing his level best to make life tough for PD. And they're sort of in the same family because... Kurt ends up working on the Caltex entry for Triple Eight and has done lots of training with David Couchy and he's part of that Triple Eight family. They're ex Red Bull cars that the Kostecki brothers have, so maybe you'll be eager to clear him here and move up into sixth position. Cleaner on Forest Elbow. He's minimizing it, Murph, isn't he? It's down to five seconds. Yeah. But he'll never catch him at this break with the amount of laps we've got remaining. Jones will know the gap. He'll be managing it, driving his car. And knowing at the speed that he is driving it, he's got time up his sleeve. In the toe. On the limit of both these cars. Both 888 built Commodores. But Paul Dumbrell too strong. And makes another move. Up behind now, his teammate Will Brown just up the road ahead. That Acra plate entry, remember, that's coming back from a penalty as well. And it's the only car in the field that opted to have two drivers. They're repairing Jake Kostecki's Commodore. It's got some chassis damage after uh, Sandown. So the Kostecki brothers paired up for this one. They've shared the driving. Here's the pass again. Clean as you like. Right under the wing of the 55. Oh, lifted a front wheel too as he turned through there, did pull Dumbrell. The right front came off the ground. Oh, he just got him back. Good job by Kirk Kostecki. Kirk Kostecki. Did Paul get a bad run up Mountain Straight? He has, as we've said, struggled at Turn 1 a few times in this race. And for Kurt to have managed to get back through, maybe he had a bit of a drama. He's right in the toe, and he pulls out. That's fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely.
Absolutely. That is a brilliant move by Kurt Kostecki. Youth versus experience. He's 19 years of age, originally from WA. Has <laughs> moved to Queensland. Old umbrellas old? No, he's not. I'm not saying I'm at, old. At he's 35. not old. Exactly. Yeah. But he's got a lot of experience. Two oh, championships. Oh, Dumbrell locks a wheel. They may have caught him by surprise, don't you reckon? Yeah. He had been hoping to make it four in a row, Paul Dumbrell. We're not done yet, but he's won this race the past three years. Oh, 2014, forward. 15 and 16. Forward gets by Nathan Morecambe. And that's up into uh, position number eight. But remember, he's got a 15-second time penalty. He's liked that move at Forest Elbow, hasn't he, Bryce Forward, this week uh, in this race today? Again. It's Groundhog Day. The 88 <laughs> behind the 55. It's red and light he does light. the move. Again, this time, Kostecki's going, no, mate, I need the room. Oh. He stayed there. Forward's going to take advantage of it. So, Kostecki, I'm not giving in. You're going to need to fight for it, PD. And a lock up. And Forward's on the wrong side of it. Again, super stuff, Nathan Morecambe. Cleaned the entire race and weaved his way through that smartly. Back with the middies entry now. <laughs> wow. Again, Super 2, Dunlop Super 2. Delivering. Giving us the action. So, forward this time goes, surely I've got a benefit from this. But he's on the wrong side, down to the last corner. And Kostecki, who has shown today in the last couple of laps, that he's not to be messed with, says no, mate. It's not happening. And the battle still continues here for third place. Hazelwood not showing any kind of speed differential to, in a positive way, to get past Andrew Jones, whose last podium in this one was 2016 at Phillip Island. Be very cool for Andrew Jones. Hazelwood trying to sneak that final spot if he can. McCauley's advantage. Macca has 4.7 now on the Brock. You're watching the battle Look for the third, and here. this is as close as you like it. Yeah. He's just struggling, maybe in the, the turbulent air, coming off the car in front to guide the big mate car exactly where he wants it to. He's having to use all the road at the front of the car, not responding just enough but of understand man has he got a toe this time he is in the toe jones goes deep hazel we've seen him make a mistake down here before they're gonna have to oh. give each other room there's a small touch and we believe they'll get the last lap board this time oh, Brad. look at that nervous Yep. So Uncle, close. Uncle Brad for Andrew. Dad yep. for McCauley. And uh, McCauley still just doing it nice and smoothly at the front. We haven't seen much of him lately because he's by himself. 4.4 seconds ahead of Jack LeBrock. There's Dad of Andrew. Inside the Brad Jones bunker yep. there. Nick Percat, who'll partner tomorrow uh, with McCauley Jones. There's the gap. Here's Hazelwood. Now remember, Hazelwood's oh, in the third of the Brad the Jones rears. Commodores tomorrow. The cool drive entry. <laughs> that's, that's right, I'd actually completely forgotten about that. So he's a BJR driver tomorrow. At the moment, he's a Matt Stone racing driver. He's got a Brad Jones car ahead, Brad Jones car ahead of him. He'll have conflip, conflicting thoughts going on in his brain. Wonder if Brad's got a communication with uh, with Hazelwood as well. McCauley down the hill. We're on the run home. Final Super lap. Stuff. We've seen him perform strongly at Sydney Motorsport Park earlier this year. We've talked about that second place at Adelaide. If he can do it, the 23-year-old, it would be a breakthrough. This will be a special moment for these guys. And what a couple of weeks they've had. And what a year they've had in terms of car rebuilds. Coming of age for this young guy. I think Super we're see stuff. some emotion here. Yeah. And rightly so. Non-championship, but still, this is a win at Bathurst. This is fighting everybody in the championship. Like the likes of Paul Dumbrell, the likes of LeBrock, the likes of Hazelwood. Here he comes. Couple of corners remaining. Yes, Brad. You should be emotional. This is a great moment.
great piece of driving, great piece of strategy. The youngster is about to break through and join the winner's list in Dunlop Super 2. Macaulay Jones does it. He's a winner at the mountain. In the second tier of that sport, Dan's tearing up. Well done. Jack LeBrock home second. It's going to be two podiums. Andrew Jones is going to hang on for third place. Brad Jones racing a first and third. How excellent is that? Where's Hazelwood? Hazelwood's had a moment. And he comes across in fourth. Only just holds out Will Brown. This will explain why in a moment as Kostecki gets ahead of Paul Dumbrell at the line. Here we go. Last to Shepard in the toe down. Conrod straight on the limiter in the V8. He goes deep. He's made a mess of it again, though. And just couldn't pull it up. He is lucky to get through. Look at the steering wheel action. Yeah. Too deep. Couldn't get his timing on the gear shifts either. Todd Hazelwood, he rally styles it through. There's Brad Jones. This boy has won this race. Let's get down to Cameron. Yeah, I'll just grab Brad Jones, who's in with the team as well. He wanted to go back to the team, mate. It's been a rough old ride lately, but uh, this must be pretty sweet. Ah, yeah, you know, it's um, it's fantastic to get a, a result. And, and um, you know, Macca and Andrew Edwards and all the guys from the Dunlop series work so hard on that car. So, you know, it's a good... It feels like we've turned the weekend around a little bit. So, uh, you know, Jonesy did an awesome job to finish third as well. So pretty pumped for the guys they've worked you know crazy crazy hours of late and and this is a, a great reward and hopefully it's a, a you know the start of a uh, an upturn on the weekend when you saw todd hazelwood one of your co-drivers starting to pressure andrew did you get in the back of your head i'll have words with him later no 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 he's doing the best he can i'm sure he remembered who he's driving for later <laughs> on in the, uh, in the weekend now look you know that was a great battle and jonesy did an awesome job to stay in front mate well you better get down to the podium yeah absolutely family affair little bit of a quiver in the voice and just welling up a fraction it means so much that was a mature drive Wasn't by it? this young man yes <laughs> and there's jonesy to greet him too <laughs> what a great way for him to lead into tomorrow joining nick Perkett in the number eight boost mobile entry congratulations macaulay jones and everybody at brad jones racing what a day. Nick Perkett there to the right of your screen. Tim Blanchard to the left. Means so much. <laughs> he is pumped. Wowee. The week started with a crash for the Freightliner Commodore. But they've turned things around. Nice result, Macaulay Jones, who will partner with Nick Perkett in the Super Cheap Auto 1000 tomorrow. Jack LeBrock gets on the podium in the Nissan Altima, and Andrew Jones completes the top three. Super stuff. Following the... BJR guys, Tim Slade is in there. Paul Forgey, guy with so much engineering experience. There's Ash Walsh making his way to the podium too. Shame he can't contest the 1,000 tomorrow, but he did the made the tough decision. Andre Heimgartner will step into that car, but this is all about Dunlop Super 2, and it is all about this guy joining the winners list. Awesome stuff, Macaulay. <laughs> Macaulay Jones, we want everyone here because this is a really special moment. Yeah. Your first victory in the Dunlop Super 2s and it's a victory here in Bathurst. Yeah, yeah man, I've been driving for this for a while, but man, the car was really good and the pit stops were even better, you know, so it's, you know, I can't thank enough to the team, you know, we've got a big crew here as you can see, so, you know, just absolutely pumped for it. Tell me what this means to you. I know it's been a really rough ride for the, the crew at Brad Jones Racing. You're here on the podium with Andrew as well. I mean, this is pretty special. Yeah, it's very special to us. You know, Bathurst have been coming here since I was a kid with my dad and, and watching him for a long time. So to have him here and, and uh, you know, the whole family really. So it's, it's awesome, yeah. I can see there's a bit of a tear in his eye as well. Congratulations. Uh, Enjoy that victory on the podium. Well done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> mega. Just mega. What a season 2017 has been. That's sporting stuff. Matthew White down to congratulate him. His driver home second in the 250Ks at the mountain today. One more championship round left for these guys.
on the streets of Newcastle. Todd Hazelwood just 49 points behind Paul Dumbrell. Some chat about whether Br Dumbrell will be able to compete up there. Is they're expecting he and his wife their second child. We'll see what happens there. This is what unfolded today. Paul was unbelievable off the start. A little bit difficult for Jack LeBrock. Had to dip that clutch. Lost some ground. And PD does not need an opportunity like that to pounce. No, he doesn't. But there was action aplenty. And this is what sort of got me thinking that McCauley didn't have the tools in the box to get the job done. But his second part of the race was just stellar. We saw Dumbrell do that twice. And Mark Dutton was talking to Andrew Simpson about it and going, what's going on there? Matt Charter, his aerodynamics weren't too good until a piece of his bumper finally came awry, right near our camera. And there was action throughout the field. They were fighting for every position as we have come, become accustomed to in Dunlop Super 2. Jordan Boyce getting it slightly wrong. Charter getting it a little bit wrong again down there which brought out the safety car it was good timing for some Brody Kostecki to the lane Jack Perkins was struggling forward he was doing lots of passes Jack shaking his head it wasn't a good day for the Titan Trey entry pit stops ensued and the guys that did the best job in the lane were the ones for the pace Commodore for Macaulay Jones Hazelwood he was having all sorts of dramas down at the chase it was a gaggle of supercars who knew what was going to happen this was a moment and he was angry with himself for this one Bryce forward a very speedy that's an ultimate but he got it wrong tagging tagging he was angry with Paul Dumbrell 15 second time penalty he's pushed him all the way down the order to last on the track, 13th, but no one could stop Macaulay Jones. It was a superb drive to take his first win in this Dunlop Super 2 category. Andrew Jones congratulating him. The pace entry, just superb today. This will be a special podium to savour, to celebrate and enjoy for Brad Jones Racing. Let's take you there now. Here's Chad. It's time for the Dunlop Super 2 Series podium here at the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. In first place for pace, Brad Jones Racing. Say hello to Macaulay Jones. Second place in the Go-Getter Racing Nissan, it's Jack LeBrock. Third place in the Alliance Truck Parts, Brad Jones Racing Commodore, Andrew Jones. With our third place trophy, it's Peter Astrope, the New South Wales Business Development Manager for Dunlop. The second place trophy today, it's Justin Harding, National Business Development Manager for Dunlop. And the winning trophy, it's Kevin Fitzsimmons, Operations Manager, Supercars Dunlop Motorsport. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the Dunlop Super 2 podium at the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. And that is going to taste pretty damn good. <laughs> Champagne showers for Macaulay Jones. He wins at the mountain in Dunlop Super 2. Andrew Jones on the podium there with him. One round of this wonderful series to go. And it's at a brand new venue, a wonderful grand finale that we're super excited about.